welcome to AF Math and Engineering. If you're enjoying this video and our channel, make sure you hit the like button and the subscribe button down below, because we're always releasing new videos and new content for engineering students. Enjoy the video. Hey everyone, welcome to the channel. Fred here from AF Math and Engineering. This video is going to be a kind of computer-aided structural analysis video. We're going to look over some software, and we're going to show you kind of how to apply uh, automated wind loads to a uh, structure uh, in eTabs. So eTabs is actually, it's a very powerful structural analysis software. Typically in the industry, this software would be used for kind of uh, calculating uh, response spectrums, lateral loads, dynamic analysis of structures, um, column design, that kind of stuff. Uh, slab design would be done more kind of typically, I mean, you can do it in eTabs too, but in a program like Safe, it gives you a lot more detail. But eTabs is a powerful program and it is very commonly used in the industry. So I'm not, by the way, just as a disclaimer, I'm not an expert in eTabs, and if you're designing any structures in real life, if, if you use my tutorials for them and something happens, I'm not responsible for that. These are mainly just for kind of your own practice, and these are not meant for actual design of, of real structures in real life. So just, just as a disclaimer there. But um, I'm gonna show you kind of, um, you know, I'm not an expert, but I do know, I uh, have a good basic grasp, I believe, of the. Of the program so I'm gonna try and share with you uh, some of the basics that I work through when I was um, kind of learning this program and uh, hopefully they help you so let's start um, this video is gonna be on applying wind loads so we're just gonna make a really basic structure really quickly we're gonna apply some wind loads and then I'm gonna show you kind of how to look at the results so first of all um, when you click on new model we have this uh, model initialization here and uh, we're gonna use some built-in settings so we're gonna come down here to built-in settings and um, I'm Canadian, so we use the SI, metric SI system for units, so you can choose whatever you want there. For a steel section, um, we're not going to be using steel, but you can choose whichever code that you want, if you're from India or Europe or anything, Russia. This is the Canadian, the steel, Canadian steel 10th edition. And here we have the Canadian concrete code, uh, 2014. And we also have 2014. So I'm going to make sure that um, if we're doing anything, that eTabs is going to design that according to the, the building code of, of the country that I'm from. So I'm going to push OK. Uh, for this one, uh, we're, we could, we're going to do some other videos on kind of column design and how to lay out floors and stuff like that. For now, I'm just going to kind of choose a flat slab pre-selected just for the purpose of uh, the wind analysis. And I'm not really going to change anything here, but you can, you can change the overhangs, you know, um, along the slab. You can add drop panels. Uh, you can add the size of the drop panel if you're going to post tension. You, and uh, you can select your structural properties here. And as well, if, if you know you wanted to kind of define a structural property before you added it here, we could go here and we could add a new property and, and insert it in there before we generated our model. We can do it. We can change it after as well. So um, these are just some kind of um, some options here. So uh, I'm not going to apply any dead load uh, or live load, and I am going to select a rigid diaphragm. Okay, we're going to assume that our concrete structure has rigid diaphragms, and um, this is kind of important for the wind load, and I'll explain that in a bit. So we're going to press OK, and we're going to press OK. So four stories is fine. That we're just going to show you how to apply the wind load, so it doesn't really matter what our structure looks like. We're going to press OK. So when we press OK, as you can see, we're going to have our plan view of the fourth story here, and we have our uh, three-dimensional view here. Depending on how big your screen is, you may want to just close one of these, but we can leave this for now. Okay, now what we need to do when we're working with uh, wind loads in eTabs, first of all, we need to kind of generate the, the, the wind load cases. Okay, so as you can see, the, we have this coordinate system here, and you can actually see it kind of better in the 3D picture, but we have a global Y direction, a global X direction, and a global Z. Okay, so these are the positive global directions. Now, remember in eTabs, there's two kind of coordinate systems. And if you kind of took a, a course in structural, uh, computer-aided structural analysis, you'll know this as well, is that there's two types of coordinate systems, right? We have our global coordinate system for the entire structure, and then our, our individual elements also have what's called a local coordinate system. And the local coordinate system for shell objects is kind of how uh, eTabs decides which direction the wind is applied in. We'll get to that in a second. We're getting a little ahead of ourselves explaining that first. So first of all, we want to establish our wind load, okay? And this is the same for any other case. So we're going to go to define, okay? And we're going to come over here, and we're going to go to load patterns, okay? Now, typically what you want to do is um, kind of for like a static wind analysis, you want to apply the wind load in the x direction and the y direction, okay? So we're just going to do x just to show you, but you could do the same thing in the y direction if you have different uh, wind pressures in the, in the other direction. So we're going to type wind. Okay, and we're going to come over here and we're going to select wind. Now, 
ETABS automatically knows that this is a lateral load and it's going to, this drop down box is now going to become ungrade. And we can come over here and under the auto lateral load and we can select our code. So um, I'm going to use, well, we, we have the option to use the National Building Code of Canada, 95, 2005, or 2010. We also have 2015 up here, so I'm going to use the most, the latest one, and we can add that load down. Now that that's added, let's go in here and we can kind of modify this, and actually, let me rename this to wind in the x direction, just so uh, we don't get kind of confused. So, two options here, and this is why I mentioned why that diaphragm's important. We have the option either to uh, expose our diaphragms to the wind load, or we can expose kind of these null shell objects like claddings, for example, because usually the non-structural elements of the building are what are exposed to the wind. Um, I, I'm not really going to get too into depth about this. Uh, this is kind of, like I said, this program is a little bit advanced, and you kind of need to understand why you're using diaphragms, why you're using shell objects, like, you know, maybe you want to check the torsion of the building due to the wind or something. Um, also, you know, you need to know what CP is. You need to know the CP coefficients. You need to know Q from the building table. So, you know, these are kind of things that, you know, if, if you're just beginning in civil engineering and you don't know anything about this stuff, it's best to maybe wait until you, you, you kind of learn what these variables are because it's very easy to mess one of these up and you don't know what's wrong. So, so we're going to expose ours to shell objects. And what we're going to do is we're going to add some kind of cladding on the outside. So for our velocity pressure, this is a Q value. You get this from the building code. We're just going to keep these default, but um, you can add your gust factor, you can add your topographic factor, your importance level, 1.15, 1.3, 1 you know, whatever it may be, depending if your importance is high, very high, and terrain, um, depending on where the terrain is. And we can see, kind of, we can also choose where we want to expose the wind to. So we don't need to, it doesn't need to be exposed to all floors. So we're going to press OK. And now we're going to press OK. All right, so we've defined our wind load. So now, how do we kind of um, apply this wind load to our structure? Well, first of all, um, because we selected the shell objects, we're going to need to go ahead and uh, apply some cladding to our building. So let's go ahead and draw our cladding. So we're going to go to draw, and we're going to come down here, and we're going to auto draw cladding. Okay, so this gives us a few options. We can either kind of trace the floors or the, you know, whatever is defined as a floor, and it'll just automatically make a uh, shell around that. We can, you know, use beams. Uh, we can go around the columns, or we can just select specific floors that we want to clad around. Uh, we're going to just use floors. So we're just going to allow ETEPs, and this one's really simple. Sometimes if you have like a complicated shape, it can be kind of odd. So uh, we're just going to allow ETEPs to kind of uh, generate our cladding for us. So, okay, ETABS has generated our, cl our cladding for us, and you have to remember that this is a non-structural element, okay? This is just a null shell. This null shell has, if we right-click on it, we can see the object information. It has no section properties, no modifiers, and it has no mass. It's only a medium in, to kind of transfer the lateral load to the building. So let's go and let's apply our load now. First of all, before we apply our load, we need to know which direction our local axes are. So um, that, and that's very important because it changes the direction of the wind. So we're going to come to the display options here, okay? And we're going to go to our object assignments, and we're going to go to our shell assignments. And we're going to want to look at our local axes, okay? So let's go ahead and press OK. And as you can see, um, this kind of generates all of our, our local axes for the shell elements, okay? So these null shells. And as we can see, this blue arrow here is the one that we're looking for. So this is the three axis, local three axis, and that's the axis that the wind is applied in. Okay, so that is the direction that we're going to want to put positive or negative, depending on which uh, either leeward or windward or whatever. So let's say that we have the wind coming from this direction, and this is our windward face. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to select all of these. And this can be like a little bit tedious, but... Okay, so now that we've selected kind of this, this windward face here, we're going to go to Assign, and we're going to go to Shell Loads, and we're going to go to Wind Pressure Coefficient. When we go to Wind Pressure Coefficient, we're going to get um, a drop-down menu. So because we're applying loads, and remember we talked about this, this is the X direction, we're going to select our X wind uh, our wind load pattern. Now, in the windward side, let's say that the, the wind is blowing towards the building. Okay, so it's blowing in the direction right now of these blue arrows. Okay, so when we assign our CP, and coefficient CP uh, depends on the height of the building. It's in the building code. You guys need to read up on that if you don't understand what CP is. Okay, so we're going to say that this is our windward face. And let's just make up a number. Let's say we have uh, 0.6 for our CP value. And what um, 
what ETABS is going to do is it's going to generate the, the kind of lateral equivalent static loads based on this for us according to the Canadian code. So it's actually pretty cool. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to apply that. And we just, once again, I just want to stress this. You just want to make sure that you're applying it in the correct direction. So we are applying it in the windward direction. We want it to be positive. So it kind of follows this blue arrow and we're just going to press apply. So now, as you can see, we have a CP value of 0.6 applied to the entire side of our building. Let's go to our other side. Okay, so we're gonna go to our leeward face. Now, as you can see here, the blue arrows are pointing inwards, okay? And let's assume that we want the windward uh, wind in our building, it's gonna be in the same direction as the windward, so it's kind of leaving the building, all right? So in that case, we're gonna to have to make these negative. So let's select them first, and I'll fast forward through this for you. So we've selected those. So let's select leeward now, for our, and we're still in the X direction. Okay, and let's say that our, our leeward CP value is negative 0.38. And the reason why we're saying it's negative is because we want it to point in the opposite direction. We want the wind to be going this way, in the opposite direction of the blue arrow. Okay, so we're gonna apply that. All right, and it's pointing in this direction, but it's negative, so. Um, sometimes ETABs, the arrows kind of mess up a little bit, so. Okay, cool, so let's press okay. And now let's go ahead, let's just analyze this structure. So we've analyzed our structure, and now let's go ahead and let's kind of take a look at what we've got here. So I'm going to close that for now. So we have our kind of deformed shape, and we can take a look, if we come over here, so we have deformed shape, we can kind of take a look at how the building is moving according to the wind, and um, sometimes this can really show you if you've done something wrong in the building. So as we can see, we've applied our wind load in this direction, and the building is kind of moving in the X direction, so we kind of know that we, we did that right at least. And a lot of the times, if you're getting errors or weird numbers in ETABs, it's 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 kind of a trial and error, so we need to kind of work on it a little bit. So so that's kind of how the, the, the building looks as it's moving. And if we click on these joints here, we can kind of get the lateral deflection up there as UX, okay? So let's go ahead and um, take a look at maybe the moments in the columns. We can do that. So we can come over here and take a look for the wind load, and let's see, um, we can include frames here, and we can see kind of the wind load that the, the columns are taking here, okay? So the wind loads are taking, columns are taking this wind load here, all right, and if we wanted to, we could kind of design these columns according to this, for this moment. All right, perfect. And finally, I just wanted to show you one more thing, and this kind of helped me uh, troubleshoot some of the more complicated uh, buildings I was trying to model, and it is under the display option okay so and by the way you can you can kind of look at anything here um, your lateral deflections that kind of stuff um, you can also come come to display and show tables so to see the, the deflections in uh, tabular form so let's come over here and let's go to display and we're gonna go to shory response plots so this is pretty cool I, I like it because it kind of sh shows you if, you if you want to do trial and error and try and see what's going wrong in your building it's kind of it shows you everything in one graph rather than having to look through tables so if we come over here and we want to go to the auto lateral loads to stories okay now what we can see here okay if we're looking at the wind in the X direction okay we can see in a table in a tabular form how our wind load is kind of being applied to our building we can also go to our maximum story displacement according to our wind load okay so we go according to our wind load as we can see our our, um, our building is displacing 11.3 millimeters at the top floor so okay that's uh, that's pretty much it I hope this was informative. I know when I was trying to learn this program, I did have some kind of issues with it. So I'm, I'm trying to put out some videos and, and just help you guys try and get through the basic steps of how to start learning ETABs. And yeah, I mean, hopefully you like it. Let me know in the comments down below if this video helped you. If you know, if you'd like to see more kind of ETAB stuff, yeah, just your thoughts. So thanks for watching guys and take care.